Hello and welcome to Smart Investing Market Insights. I'm Krista Das and today we are here to talk about the new oil cold war. I'm referring to the battle over the untapped oil resources in Africa that will shift the winners from the losers and make vast fortunes for a select few. To discuss our growing demand for oil and gas and to reveal how to profit from Africa's black gold, I've invited Christian DeHamer, publisher of Taipan's Trading Services and Chief Strategist strategist for Red Zone Profits. Chris, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Before we get into these untapped oil resources and this African proxy fight, let's talk about the pressures at the pump. Gas is up, but so are futures. What's going on, Chris? Here's a shocker. The price of gas goes up in the summer. I know you can't believe it, but it's true. Every spring, the U.S. refineries slow down production due to annual maintenance. This year, they've hit more problems than normal. Consequently, inventories of U.S. gasoline have fallen for three months, up until last week. The average national price is now at $3.07. That's above the $3.05 post-Katrina highs. But because nothing is simple in this market, gasoline futures for June delivery fell $5, I mean $0.05 cents to settle at $2.30 on the New York Mercantile Exchange. The price just got a bit ahead of itself. The price of oil has also been heading higher. That's true. Brent Seed Crude hit $67 on a barrel in London due to tight supplies. In New York, Light Sweet Crude hit $62 a barrel. This upward momentum is due to a warning from the International Energy Agency over tight supplies. But this isn't an all-time high, but it's trending in that direction. So with oil and gas and tight supply, what are your views on the alternative energy sector? Well, Krista, alternative energy is a false god. It is not the answer. <laughs> Corn or ethanol requires more BTUs to produce than it makes. Wind farms take up a massive amount of space, create environmental concerns, and produce little energy. And even hybrid cars have a legacy of environmental damage due to their batteries. And given that hybrid cars cost $1,500 to $4,500 more it would take, than it would take them to pay for themselves going forward. According to Edmonds, it would take nearly 10 years to recoup the extra costs after buying a 2007 Mercury Mariner hybrid. For the 2007 Honda Accord and Honda Civic hybrids, it takes 14.5 and 6.5 years, respectively. That said, the 2007 Toyota Prius remains a good bargain when compared to a similar, similarly equipped 2007 Camry takes just 1.2 years to break even. But that's kind of like comparing apples and oranges. But none of these alternative energy systems would be worth anything if it wasn't for the massive government subsidies and the case of Toyota, severe discounting. What about nuclear power and the run-up in uranium we've all been hearing so much about? An increase in u nuclear power energy remains five to ten years off. And in the end, it's local. Right. Though I'm putting a reactor in my Hummer, I've already lined the trunk with like two feet of lead and, uh, you know, it's going to be great. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, the demand for uranium is there, but in many ways it's a speculative bubble created by future demand and the desires of certain rogue funds. In the long run, nuclear build-out is going to happen. In the meantime, the only practical answer remains hydrocarbons in general and oil in particular. But with demand outstripping supply, where is the oil going to come from? There are only a few places of undiscovered oil left. One of them is the war-torn environments on the Horn of Africa. In fact, the northern region of Somalia, or Puntland, contains the same geography as Yemen and Saudi Arabia. There are billions of barrels of oil under the sand. Somalia? Didn't we just get reports of the worst fighting in Mogadishu since the U.S. Marines left more than a decade ago? That's true. The war rages on. The CIA has backed the Ethiopian government, which has recently invaded Mogadishu in order to force the hardcore Islamo-fascists that control that part of the world. This effort has been partially successful to date. But that really doesn't matter, because there is no fighting in northern Somalia or Puntland. Okay. There is a huge difference between Puntland and Mogadishu. Puntland acts as an independent state with laws, human rights, the ability to sign treaties, etc. At any rate, war or no war, there is a desire by global forces to reap the natural resources of Africa. So after two decades of relatively little outside interference, Africa is in play once again. By in play, what do you mean? Well, the CIA is there. The Army just reconstructed its 
its command structure creating an Africa command, and it has 1,700 American troops in Djibouti, hmm. just west of Puntland, though it's not getting much play in the media. In fact, most people have never heard of the African command, but it's there. On the other side, you have the Chinese, President Hu Hinto, who has visited Africa twice in the past year. China is investing billions of dollars in eight African countries in a bid to secure resources from oil to gold. This is not surprising since Africa supplied between 25 and 28 percent of China's oil imports last year. So you believe there will be a new Cold War for natural resources in Africa? You can put it that way, sure. A proxy fight to secure the world's last untapped pool of black gold. The upshot is that gasoline is headed towards $4. Who knows if it will get there? It's likely. Oil is headed towards record highs. China has been growing at 10% a year since 1978. The U.S. continues to increase demand. Alternative energy isn't cost effective, at least not yet. <clears throat> there is money to be made in Africa in oil, and that's where I advise you to look. Chris, where can viewers get more information on how to profit from this oil cold war in Africa? Well, you can go to redzoneprofits.com or taipanfinancialnews.com. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. That's all for this edition of Market Insights. I'm Krista Das, and I'll see you again next week on taipanfinancialnews.com. Have a great week.